Why would anyone start an Amazon business? Anyone starting an Amazon FBA business right now must be completely out of their minds, right? Not exactly. In this video, I'm going to tell you why it can be one of the best opportunities right now and how it's possible to make a seven-figure exit. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get new videos every week. So the topic is that why would anyone want to sell on Amazon? I mean, it's, we, we, we must be really crazy or what? <laughs> Well, I'm actually going to tell you like seven reasons to start and keep growing your Amazon business. And I know that things can sometimes be a bit rough and it can be a bit of like demotivating. So I'm actually going to give you seven reasons that basically you should keep in mind that you, and should use basically like you should, that should also help you get a bit motivated. So number one is definitely this, that there's more potential buyers for your FBA business than ever before. So, I mean, things have never, ever been like this. So, I mean, this basically started like pretty much like two years ago. So people, I mean, different like venture capitalists and different kind of companies saw the opportunity there is on Amazon. So they just started like uh, hoarding this kind of, um, Amazon FBA brands and uh, so that means that I mean this is completely new thing it wasn't like this like let's say five years ago and just take a look at this and <laughs> this one is pretty crazy so this is actually an email I got from the uh, one of the founders from Lazada so if you don't know Lazada it's one of like uh, it's this like e-commerce giant and this is really big especially in the in Southeast Asia. So, uh, for example, in when I lived in Philippines, I used uh, Lazada quite a bit, so it's really popular there. And it's bit, a bit of like uh, Amazon uh, for uh, in uh, Southeast Asia. Anyway, so he's basically selling that. I mean, he sold Lazada back a few some years ago to Alibaba Group for three billion dollars, and now he has a new project that he just started. So he co-founded a new business called Branded. So what is Branded? So he says that, that it's a platform to acquire and grow e-commerce brands globally with a big focus on um, branding. So I mean, he's basically started uh, like uh, so he sold Lazada to. Alibaba and now he co-founded a new business that is basically just buying Amazon FBA brands. I mean, pretty crazy, right? I mean, this just shows like how big of an opportunity and how like really special time it is. So he just sent me an email saying, man, I like, I like what you're doing with your brand and I just want to want to buy it. And he has an article from Financial Times showing that, I mean, these investors are pouring like billions of dollars into buying up small merchants on Amazon. So, and all these different companies like Trasio, Seller X, Euros, I mean, they didn't exist. I mean, many, many of them didn't even exist until a few years ago when they kind of like realized this uh, opportunity. And uh, it's a really interesting thing, like what one of these buyers is saying there, like the, from upper 90 that, I mean, just as, 20 years ago, big corporations started to consolidate these local independent teams, dry cleaners and coffee shops into chains and franchises. We think the same phenomenon will take place in the digital world. What's the, what does that mean? Well, it basically means that Amazon is the new mall. And he says that, that I mean, I don't think people realize how big this will actually be. And like I mentioned there, I mean, these companies didn't really exist. Uh, I mean, just take a look at like heyday. I mean, early last year, it didn't, uh, it wasn't even, uh, it was basically found like early last year. And so there's over, already like over 50 buyers paying millions for Amazon FBA brands. So I started listing uh, some of these here, but I already quit on leather eights. 
And um, one of these companies here, this e brands, that's actually uh, the co-founded by one of our students, Jonne Välilä. So I'm, tomorrow I'm actually going to be doing a webinar with him and uh, discussing that uh, what they're actually doing. So he has already like uh, acquired 10 Amazon FBA brands and uh, going to acquire but more this year. So definitely join the webinar tomorrow as we are going to be discussing it. And point is that, I mean, there's new buyers entering this market all the time. There's more to come. And also, also we are joining the game as well. Number two is that, I mean, it, the, it's the bigger, bigger market than ever. And it's always basically, it's ever expanding, which means that, I mean, uh, I mean, of course, I mean, Amazon is expanding to new marketplaces like Sweden and Australia, Middle East and uh, Europe, I mean, everywhere. But the thing is that it's also like growing like crazy in the US alone, especially like last year when the pandemic started. And it's, it might be a bit difficult to understand if you are not, uh, if you have not really used uh, Amazon and I, I can tell you that I mean Amazon uh, the Nordics I mean it's completely different than it's in let's say for example in California like everyone in California loves Amazon because it just makes life so convenient and I mean when we moved uh, to California and I it, it, it didn't take many weeks until my fam family pretty much became like hardcore user of Amazon so I mean Amazon is just growing like crazy. And if you look at the growth rate here, like let's just take a look at the previous like five, uh, five years from 1215 to 2020. I mean, Amazon didn't only double or triple. <laughs> I mean, it quadrupled, the sales could triple. It's four times net sales than it was like at the previous year. And yeah, I mean, Amazon made, made more profit during the pandemic than in the past three years. I mean, yeah, they're growing, they're make making profit, but what matters to us is that, I mean, look at what it says there. I mean, they have reported to have more than 200 million paying prime members. And these are the people that you should definitely care about because these are the people buying your products. And already, like, uh, it was a pretty funny statistics, like in the US, there's more uh, uh, Amazon Prime members than people going to church on Sundays. That's pretty funny. And this is actually interesting thing. So uh, number three point that like right now there's like fewer Chinese competitors. And uh, for quite some time, like uh, the Chinese did have some uh, aids, meaning that first of all, I mean, they had easier access to suppliers and then they did kind of like black hat tactics over there but i mean did those tactics pay off well it didn't take uh, too long that amazon actually just started kicking out these chinese sellers and they this basically goes to show you that amazon doesn't care how big you are i mean some of i mean all, totality we are talking about billions of dollars in terms of sales so, I mean, uh, Amazon just kicked out like 50,000 uh, 50, Chinese merchant accounts banned because, I mean, they were doing uh, like different kinds of uh, tactics that are not allowed. So, for example, paying for re re reviews and, and so on. So, what do you think happens in the marketplace when there's this amount of uh, like players uh, um, like kicked out from the platform, are the are, are the customers disappearing? Of course not. I mean, the customers are still there. The sales are still there. But I mean, where are they going when the, the when these specific like product listings are gone? They go to the competitors. So that means that you might have just been uh, granted like real blessing uh, blessing by this. And number four is that there's, I mean, always, Amazon is always innovating and Amazon is obsessed with customer experience. And 
you you can really see it from here like uh like it's not only about what uh amazon is doing but it's also about like what customers of amazon are basically telling so i mean consumers they take a look what it says there consumers go to amazon for almost every activity possible in their shopping experience and i can tell you this by like uh when uh, by living in California that I mean it is spot on because everything Amazon makes everything so easy first of all I mean the ordering and if, if there's any kind of issue you can just uh, refund those I mean you get e refund and let's say that you order stuff that you want to return I mean even returning the items have been made so uh Easy. So you don't need to ship anything. You don't need to like print out any labels or anything. You don't even need the packaging. You just go to one uh, uh, to a shopping mall and just uh, go to the like Amazon booth there. That hey, I would like to return this, and then they just scan the like barcode and whoops, it's immediately. I I'm, they are basically giving it back to your account. So it's really about convenience. And it's also about the, like the product catalog. I mean, one reason like people are so loyal to Amazon because just the product assortment is so huge. There's so like different, so so, so many different kinds of products, and basically uh, it, most of the things that you need in a household you, you can find from uh, Amazon. Then number five is. This, there is low threshold to test out product ideas. So what does that mean? It means that you can get your product quickly in front of real paying customers. So this means that you don't need to do uh, like lengthy kind of uh, uh, research or kind of uh, like investing so much into it because you can do you can uh, test out product ideas pretty pretty with pretty minimal investment cost so you could take out the uh, really small batch of inventory just take out i mean just launch it on amazon and see what the, like real actual like living paying customers think about it it's meaning that you get this product feedback from real customers and I mean, there's a good saying that, I mean, nothing happens until a sale is, is made. And another good saying is that, that no product survives the, like the first encounter with a real customer, because that's when you get the real data. And you don't, this means that we have this kind of uh, launching platform with a huge, huge amount of customers where we can take our product and see that or to take our idea that hmm i wonder like uh, would this work what what would the real market think about this product so i mean that's a huge benefit compared to for, for example that i'm just going to like uh, start driving uh, traffic into my own own website and uh, try to get people to buy then the this is really important because I mean, just think about the feedback you get uh, regarding advertising from Amazon, because you get all those different search terms that how people find your product. And you basically, it, it's, it's so important thing, which helps you in order to find the right, right uh, search terms for, for your product. Then number six, an even playing field. And this it used it didn't really used to be like this especially for example with mentioned chinese that okay maybe they didn't have really have the same rules as uh, as we did meaning that they they were able to do so much like black hat stuff and, and amazon didn't do anything uh, about it for years but i mean like we just saw that they, they are i they are really like uh, kicking out these kind of players out of the platform. So, I mean, that's that definitely like evens it out much more. And this means that in the platform, you can compete with big brands or even Amazon. And let's say that, okay, I mean, if Amazon is your competitor and you are basically, let's say you would 
compete with its own brand, Amazon Basics. Well, I mean, if you're not doing anything to differentiate, then I mean, you should you should reconsider your product. You should you should reconsider your listing. But the point is that Amazon is not basically creating uh, its uh, its own products uh, differently than uh, it does your products because it's much more based on uh, the algorithm. And this was it's, this was actually interesting discussion they had internally, like I don't know, like a decade ago when they started uh, letting in like third-party sellers because. Uh, Jeff Bezos was, was discussing with different uh, executives like, okay, what should they do? Like, uh, the, because the team was suggesting that, of course, I mean, we should favor our own listings. We should favor our own uh, Amazon uh, products. Let, I mean, let's put those Amazon products to the top of the search terms. I mean, that makes perfect sense, right? But Jeff uh, Bezos said that, no, no, no. I mean, that's not going to result in, in the best customer experience because as we said before like amazon is all about the serving i mean giving really the best customer experience so at that time they decided that no we are not going to favor our own products we are not going to favor well uh, i mean we ourselves as the seller we are going to let the algorithm decide because that will eventually be best for us, best for Amazon, because if, if we just value the customer and like basically build the greatest customer experience, then it's going to pay off eventually. So, and if that's what uh, Amazon is uh, focusing on, then I mean, you should definitely focus on the same thing. So focus on where Amazon wants you to focus. So meaning that, if, I mean, one of the, most valuable thing or dear, dearest thing for them is really this customer experience. And it was funny, like uh, one time, uh, some years ago, I gave access to one consult consultant that was doing some stuff, stuff for us. So I gave her access to the seller central account. And he was, she was basically telling me that, uh, oh my God, like, like, why do you have uh, so many like uh, refunds? Like, this is a big problem. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, our, our percentage is, I mean, it's like zero point something. I mean, it's not such a big deal. I mean, of course, there's a lot of uh, refunds, but I mean, we are also doing like large volume. So it doesn't really matter, right? And she told me, no, it does matter. So you shouldn't like, yeah, you shouldn't have this, uh, many refunds so you should definitely do about it because uh, Amazon cares all about the customer experience and if you're getting refunds and returns it, me it means that the customers don't like your product that something went wrong and uh, if the customers don't like your product then uh, Amazon is not going to like your product either so that was really like uh, eye-opening for me and oh okay so don't, so then I really have to take this uh, like seriously and really put like uh, customer experience uh, in, in, to the like center of everything. And number seven is that, I mean, uh, sure, I mean, there's been many different differences throughout the years and uh, like one might say that uh, the selling on Amazon is more difficult than ever, but then again, we have more resources than ever before. Like before there was, I mean, nowadays Amazon just gives more data than ever before. And the, meaning that you can use the data on Amazon for your uh, product research and you can use reviews, you can use feedback, you can use like search terms, you can use like all the stuff you get from uh, the advertising. And there's all these different tools out there. I mean, there's new tools popping up every single month. So that means like that uh, before there it weren't really that many tools. So it, it definitely makes things easier. Like if you need to do get something done, you don't need to do it necessarily like manually. And there's have already been like other people thinking about this because my, many of these tools are built by sellers by and they are 
basically build to meet the different needs of a seller. So it's definitely a big change and huge change in this. And I would say, I mean, it's definitely for the better that we have like a lot more tools to, to use nowadays. And same thing with services. Like before, it was impossible to find people uh, uh, to help you. Let, let's say that you wanted to have a virtual assistant with some uh, Amazon experience. Now, I mean, no chance because I mean, be, there was just no such competence in the in uh, in the market. But nowadays, there's even like many different services that can give you that can do these different tasks for your business. Let's say that you don't like some specific things uh, to do on seller central, like, I don't know, shipping plans or, or whatever, whatever stuff on the product listing. I mean, there's all, there's different kind of services that are able to do it all for you. And same thing more like customer service, uh, advertising, like there's so many things that, uh, you, you can buy as a service nowadays. So this is completely different. And I remember like uh, first time when, when uh, we told to bank or whatever that, hey, I mean, uh, because they were asking like, what kind of business model do you have? Like, what exactly are you doing? Like when you open the, they ask these questions, like when you open the bank account and we were saying that, yeah, e-commerce, but then they kept asking more details, and so on. So we were saying like, yeah, we are selling on uh, Amazon. So Amazon is this like uh, e-commerce platform and we are selling there. So, I mean, they, they were completely blank. They didn't, they had no idea what we were talking about. And if we had asked them, I mean, and this was just only for opening the bank account. If we had asked even for loans or anything, that would, that would have been completely out of the question. But nowadays, there are many different funding options. So there's companies that uh, can uh, like give you capital and uh, capital to grow. So capital that, that you can invest uh, into inventory. And right now, I mean, uh, O&D is approaching. So you should already, and typically during the last quarter, you need to have, uh, th that's really the time that you spend a lot on inventory so you need that's the time to make being big investments so if you're having you're in the situation that i need to make uh, inventory purchases so i can be prepared for the uh, for the last quarter so that i don't run out of stock i mean nowadays there's different kind of services uh, or different kind of funding options funding companies that will give you that okay we will give you give you a loan and then you can use that to buy inventory and then uh, just pay, pay up like uh, in uh, in January after you, after that OND so this, this has completely changed and I mean the interest rate right, right now I mean it's ridiculously low so it's really great great uh, Great thing. So as we can see, there's many different, uh, I mean, there are more resources than ever before. And you can even get coaching. Like you get coaching from us. I mean, basically you have people who know what they are doing. So you can actually ask people, other people who have experience and get them to coach you get, so that you get the support that you need in order to build the, this business. So there's really more resources than ever before. And so maybe you're thinking that, okay, okay, I get it. I need my own Amazon FBA brand. So what can I do to make my brand attractive to buyers? I mean, this is a really, really good question. And um, this is basically a topic on its own, but I'm just gonna be giving some, uh, some key points. So what makes a brand attractive? Well, first of all, you need to have uh, profitability. I mean, if you're not making any, any profit, then uh, first uh, thing like buyers are going to ask that, okay, why, why not? Like, like what's wrong? And of course, uh, there, there's, especially during periods where, where you have like uh, uh, high growth rate, 
then you're going to be investing more and more. But I mean, if the bottom line, if the prof profitability is not there, then I mean, it, it's, it's basically you are going to be being a, a lot less attractive uh, brand. And key thing, another key thing really is growth. So if, if, your, if your sales have been the same from year to year, like, and you really don't have it, this kind of growth trend, then I mean, buyers are going to ask like, why? I mean, uh, what's the problem? Like, uh, are, do, like, and the worst thing is that it's not, the worst thing is not if you, your sales are the same. The worst thing if the sales are actually going down. That's that's a nightmare because then uh, that will make the buyers really worried now. I'm really afraid to buy your brand because your sales are just getting lower and lower. So I'm afraid that if I give you all this money for your brand, then uh, are your sales actually going go, go, going to go to zero? Like what, what's wrong? You should fix it. And another key thing is that intellectual property. So different kind of patents and trademarks, but the thing is that, I mean, most of us have this like private label uh, business, which means that you don't necessarily have anything that that unique that you're doing, meaning that you don't necessarily have your own modes for, for, your, uh, for your products. So it's not really focused on that. It's, it's more about the uh, trademark, meaning that you have a brand and you have trade market all around the world. And you have like your brand has this intellectual property. Because I mean, let, let's face it, like uh, just think about the different products that there are, uh, that different companies are selling like let's just think about some uh, products like uh, some kind of uh, for example luggage scale or something like this i mean class olson the, is ha, has their own and ikea has their own i've seen the thing is that it's probably even bought from the uh, same same factory same supplier but still there are like many different uh, 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 many different sellers, but the point is that your your brand really has to be uh, protected. Then one key thing is also like simple transferability, meaning that when I when I want to buy your brand, I want to I want to e easily transfer the ownership to me. And this means that um, the more complications uh, you have, then then I mean the less attractive your business is going to be. And then this is a really important thing like systems. Systems, so you have documentation, you have like uh, system, S SOPs like for your business and also especially important is like supply chain management. So how are you basically, what's your process in uh, buying, uh, buy, buying the inventory and how do you get it to uh, to the end customer, or how do you get it to Amazon? Like, how solid is, is how solid is your supply chain management? And like, what happens when I take over? Like, do you have some kind of what kind of contracts do you have with these suppliers? And are you only dependent on one supplier, or do you have like leeway there? So, meaning that you have mitigated your risks, meaning that. Even if your one supplier goes down, then you, your business not, is not dead. You have all these different alternatives, which are basically able to uh, easily transfer. So it's about really, the, the, and one another point here is that you have like clean books. So you have d done your like uh, all the statements and that kind of stuff, like everything you like. The easy, I mean, the better reports you have, the easier it's going to, I mean, the more attractive it's going to make. That's a really key thing. Like you need to have uh, clean books. Then and re re related to it, clean, cleanliness is solid history. Meaning that if you have done some kind of like black hat tactics or paid reviews, I mean, it's going to be less attractive because there's this risk 
especially when we are dealing with Amazon, that it might happen with the same thing might happen as with the Chinese. Amazon might just uh, like throw your brand out, out of the window. So, <laughs> and so if you have, if you have done some shady stuff, then you should definitely be honest about it and let, let, uh, let the buyers know. So, and another thing is that uh, uh, regarding history, like how, how long have you been selling? Like how old is your brand? And, uh, and those kind of things. For example, let's say that you, uh, you started your business like a year ago. So, I mean, you probably won't have that many people interested if it's only one year old business. And typically buyers want to have two years. So they want to see like two years of uh, books, two years of tax reports, two years of everything. So that basically they can be more uh, certain about the, uh, about the future, because what, what are people, I mean, what are buyers paying you? I'm, I'm buying your bis big business because I so have confidence that once I buy your business, that I, I will be able to make uh, like, uh, I will be able to make the profit in the certain years. And the, the higher the multiplier, the more confident I'm with your, uh, with your business pretty much. And seventh thing, this is an important thing, but it's not really, but it's the last thing because it's not such a big deal, but I mean structure, meaning that how have you set up your uh, uh, brand? How have you set up your business? Because let's, let's say that you want to have as many uh, potential buyers as possible. Then, then if, if that's, the, that's the case, then you should probably have an like LLC in the US. Because may, they, that way you are able to attract like more more uh, more buyers but let's say that you you are selling your fba business to s someone like uh, thrasio who is like venture ca capital who is backed by venture capitalists and they have like hundreds of millions uh, in use i mean they they don't give a crap <laughs> about your structure because they have the cash to give just uh, i mean the main question is that okay where do we wire the money we will just uh, like make an instant payment instead of like uh, with let's say like these small individuals, small and mom and pop stores. They 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 are basically able if if they, if you have two years of books in the U.S., then they will be able to get a loan in order to buy your business. So that's where the structure really matters in, in those kind of uh, situations. But the point is that if you want to have as many potential buyers as possible, then you should uh, definitely care about the structure. So yeah, as I mentioned, this is pretty much the topic of, of its own, but here are seven key things that you should uh, consider how to make your brand attractive to potential buyers. So what do you think? Do you agree or disagree? Let me know. And if you like the video, then hit a thumbs up and let me know your biggest takeaway. If you want to get new videos about selling on Amazon, then subscribe to this YouTube channel. And if you need my help on selling on Amazon, then sign up for my free training. See you soon.